Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, college football fans across the nation and around the world. This is Tim May with the Tim May Show. And uh, once again, my special co-pilot for this show. I've got a couple of co-pilots for this show, as it turns out. But my the first one, I'm going to let take the first leg of the flight. Uh, Matt Wilhelm. I fly, the, I, fly, I fly the straightest, Tim. Yes, you do. You, you do <laughs> fly the straightest. You also shoot the straightest. <laughs> that's right. That's right. It's important in this segment because uh, – you know, obviously, uh, Matt Wilhelm, former Ohio State linebacker, former NFL mm-hmm. linebacker, former national champion linebacker with uh, the Ohio State University. Uh, welcome back again, man. And uh, let's just jump right into it. Obviously, the big news of this week, Ohio State is not that Ohio State's been invited to the Cotton Bowl or is going to be playing in the Cotton Bowl against a game Missouri team. It said it's going to be doing so with a new starting quarterback of some sorts, probably Devin Brown, but. I don't know if it's stunning news. A lot of us around the beat thought something like this was coming down, but Cal McCord suddenly announced his uh, his entry into the transfer portal. Now, you know, you can enter the transfer portal and not go anywhere, but uh, that's sure. not going to be the case. Uh, it doesn't appear with uh, Cal McCord. And just, number one, what was your reaction to this news? But then, uh, you know, you were among, among many who thought Ohio State – could have gotten better play from his quarterback this year, along with, you know, other places, but not going to lay it all on Kyle McCord, but just what was your reaction when you heard the news and where do you think Ohio state goes from here? Uh, I, I, that's a, that's a great loaded question. And uh, so you've gave, given me the floor for now, five minutes to, to answer all those questions, which yeah. is fine. That's how it, that's how it always is. Um, well, th- first and foremost, thank you for having me again, Tim, and, uh, and all the people across the world that listen to this. Uh, no. We're very appreciative of you. Um, not a surprise. And, uh, and truthfully, and I have to say this, you know, I got peppered with probably, you know, a dozen text messages as that, that news hit this morning. And uh, frankly, and it's nothing so much against the kid, right? Kyle McCord himself. Uh, my response to all of these messages was good riddance, wow. frankly. Um, and, and here's the reason why. And we've talked about it as the season's gone on about what we've gotten accustomed to at the quarterback position since yeah. Ryan Day has come to Ohio State, either as the quarterback coach, office coordinator, and now head football coach, play caller, whatever, you know, all the above, right? Yeah. Offensively. Iterations. Um, I did the math this morning. Um, 148 touchdowns over the last four seasons thrown, thrown by the two young men who are both playing in the National Football League in this same system with probably the same talent at wide receiver. Uh, Now, offensive line run game, we can get in, you know, get into the weeds if we need to, but I'm not, I'm going to leave it at that. That's, excuse me, averaging 37 touchdowns a season. And mind you, Justin Fields, I think had 22 in one, in, in, in his first year as the starter at Ohio state, probably rushed for 15. I didn't look at that. I'm just talking about throwing touchdowns. Produce touchdowns. Yeah. He had 22. Then I think 41, uh, in his second year as a starter ahead of being drafted by the Chicago Bears. Then we know with C.J. Stroud through 40-plus, almost 50 in two consecutive seasons. Uh, again, those four years of Ohio State football averaged 37 touchdowns through the air. Kyle McCord, 24. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, the same type of schedule, you know, uh, some early, early challenges, Oregon, Notre Dame home, Notre Dame away, uh, you run through the middle portion of the schedule. You know, you survive a good Maryland team. You beat Penn State. You ro- roll undefeated to the game, right? Yeah. Um. So <clears throat> I just think flat out, um, I was hoping McCord would win out the battle because I the one thing I didn't want was uh, the completely unproven player like Devin Brown who was uh, more – everyone was so in, more enamored with – his athleticism and his legs than he was his arm because you look at the two guys again prior cj stroud just started running with the football in the george game when the when, when the program's life was on the line against georgia in an opportunity to play for a national championship stood in the pocket through the football justin fields probably ran too much early why he only threw for 22 then stood in the pocket through the football cj stroud stood in the pocket through the football and kyle mccord stood in the pocket through the football so I wasn't so enamored with Devin McCord just tucking it like Terrell Pryor and running with the football and then learning how to throw it in our offense and wasting the talent we have at wide receiver. Otherwise, Brian Hartline and the hard work that he does each and every offseason to go get the five-star receivers would be irrelevant in our system. And so um, I, it was good riddance. 
it was all because it didn't look close enough to what we've been become accustomed to at Ohio State. And we can, you know, we can dig into the weeds about why. Um, I believe, and I do not have a, I do not have a fact, black or white. I haven't, you know, reached out to any contact. This is completely off the top of Matt Wilhelm's head. Is I believe a conversation over the last couple of days has gone like this. Um, and but I have been in tune to some of the the the, the links to Ohio State's players that are leaving to enter the transfer portal and also the five quarterbacks that have thrown for a boatload of yards more than Kyle McCord did in this one season that have become available through the transfer portal yeah. is I believe that Ryan day after going zero and three against that team up North is backed into a corner and needed to do something brash to save himself and to save and to create the opportunity that he believes that next year at home against uh, that, that team up north, if the same situation arises where 11-0 and 11-0, and, and I know it's completely different with the 12-team playoff, but and, and we, we can get into that and do a whole other show, yeah. is win the game that matters most to the school that we play for and that we root for and that I went to and that I beat the last two times when it mattered most, which is beat the, win, the, win the rivalry. Yeah. Don't bet. Don't. And I'm actually glad to a certain extent. I'm a little embarrassed to play Missouri, which is like, you know, gets good once a decade, you know. Uh, yeah, but look out for Missouri. I'm just telling you. Go ahead now. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. That's fine. Whether we win or lose the bowl game, does it really even matter to us Ohio State fans? Yeah. Well, it'll does be it, something else to it? be upset about. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah. You know what? I, I hope we do. And it pisses us all off, including the players and coaches, to get to make it look different for next year. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I'm a little like, and I'll be honest, like, I think the New Year's Six games are a little like, wah, 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 you know. Ole Miss, Penn State, us in Missouri, you know, it's just like, ugh. I, at worst, I wanted to play a premier college football uh, team that's, you know, yearly, annually. I'd rather play Clemson, who got hot at the end of the season, than play Missouri, frankly. Yeah, I got you. Um, that's that's just you. my take. But okay. um, Ryan Day needed to make a change to save his job. And everyone now knows Kyle McCord's not that dude. Right to go. Yeah, let me let me interrupt you. Let me interrupt you something. Sure. Uh, so when you say when you use the term "good riddance," you're you're saying "good riddance" to this experiment or this this iteration of the Ohio State quarterback situation. Because obviously, Cal McCord didn't anoint himself the starting quarterback. No, he no. quote won the battle in quote, and it's like almost like you need to start anew, is what you're saying, right? Yes, it's also it's it's also why I said of Devin Brown and and Lincoln Kleinholz and Kyle McCord, I wanted McCord to win the battle because I thought our Kyle McCord gave us the best chance to look like what our yeah. offense looked like with C.J. Stroud. Yeah. Um, given he played in this system in cleanup duty in a few games, uh, what started the Akron game, I believe. Yeah, as a freshman. Uh, you know, uh, as a freshman, uh, at the pocket passer who's not going to take off and run it, kind of like C.J. Stroud. So. That was my best assumption of what it was going to look like, not have Devin Brown take off and run the football. Uh, so, but that said, with the talent that's available in the transfer portal, uh, I believe that we are going to be extremely attractive as a program to those players. Uh, and we it, they'll be attractive to us and we'll be attractive to them. So it's vice versa. So it's just a matter of how the dominoes fall. But I think in some cases uh, – whether it's been stated or not by Gene Smith, who I think is going to, you know, he's going to be in retirement very soon or whatever the next athletic director who makes that big decision about Ohio State football and their leader. And I'm not questioning in any regard Ryan Day. Yeah. Um, I just have, if I were in his shoes, I would say what has been the norm is clearly not good enough for the expectations of Ohio State football. That's winning the rivalry. That's making, being a top four football team and winning a national championship. And he didn't check that box last year. He didn't check that box this year. I need to get CFP, but we backed our way in. I would prefer, and it's like, and I sometimes, you know, people send me screenshots of message boards about Ohio State football. And I am of the sense that while I would have been lucky and cheered for Ohio State to back their way into the college football playoff again, the way they did last year, I think it benefits our program that we didn't. And that a hard line like this had to get drawn from everybody to go play in a meaningless January 1st football game that doesn't allow us to, we didn't win the big 10. What are our goals? National championship, win the big 10, you know, beat Michigan. You're 0-3 yeah. for those three goals again. 
Yeah. Okay. So you're going to get some cool, bowl, you're going to get some cool bowl gifts and go play in a game in Texas, not be in Ohio, you know, at the, at the end of the year, that's about it. Right. Yeah. So it allows you to go uh, wipe the slate clean and have all the critical minds that have input on what our next step is. Ryan day, Mark Pantone, Gene Smith, uh, the you know, the quarterback coach, all those minds are going to all come together now to create a plan of what next year's iteration, you know, offensively looks like about who is it going to be a youth movement and go with Devin Brown, Lincoln Kleinholtz, Air Nolan, you know, if, if there's an opportunity to play as a freshman and compete as a freshman, or is it to throw one of these tra- graduate transfers or one of these transfer quarterbacks into the mix, uh, a la kind of what Notre Dame did this year with Sam Hartman. Yeah, which didn't get them where they wanted to go either. You know, be, nope. beware – Beware the uh, in uh, the import portal, as I call it. Uh, question here: As it, see the 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 idea, the 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 word that keeps coming to my brain when it comes to what Ohio State, not just maybe even Ryan Day, but what their fans seek in a quarterback. The word dynamic is what comes to my mind. Meaning, yeah, when everything breaks down, you can run, you can get it done. Obviously, he dealt with a sprained ankle most of the year. Uh, but what I'm saying, what comes to your mind of what you want? Forget about the numbers you want to see. What is the player you want to see? Devin Brown seems to have the ability to be that dynamic player. He can throw the ball, man. You know, sure. And they were like I like I've said uh, many times, they were trying to work him into this. I do believe by putting in that little wildcat package with him, et cetera. So, what is the word that comes to mind? What is the description of the quarterback you want to see playing for Ohio State? Well, I believe I. Uh... In a perfect scenario, you go back to uh, Justin Fields. I'll even just jump C.J. Stroud, even though I've become a Texans fan rooting for C.J. Stroud. Uh, my neighbor, Chris Kippen, you know, he's going to be a Browns coach, is now with Houston, so I'm, I'm excited to see them do well. I would say year two Justin Fields. And what does that look like? That means throwing for 4,000 yards and 40 touchdowns. and But yet, at any given time, you can take off and get us a first down with your legs. Yeah. And I didn't, I didn't say scram. And again, I, I know JJ McCarthy's, but JJ McCarthy's scrambling around to get that first down against us. Yeah. You know, was it's huge. De- it's demoralizing for a defense. And I've been, a, I've been that guy. You're great on first down. You're great on second down. You got him in third and eight, third and seven plus. You feel like you got, you know, exactly what they're going to do. You cover them up. The rush doesn't get home. Quarterback escapes, walks out of a tackle, reaches over the first down marker and moves the chains. Yeah. Now yeah. you got to go do that again. And so to have a guy that can do that, and we saw at the biggest stage against the defense in Georgia, just with even now just to talk about Stroud and how that mindset shift with that all, all hands do whatever it takes necessary mentality at the quarterback position and with Ryan Day as a little bit more of a loose play caller, I think everybody can kind of, a, you know, have a feel that that's the, that's the way that it was. Like, you know, we're not supposed to be here anyway, and we're playing the number one team. We're playing the juggernaut. Let's just let it rip. Yeah. And, yeah. and to have that mentality – and have that guy that can take off and run is demoralizing for a defense. Yeah. And so that so that means you got to have a plus athlete, but a, but a guy who wins with his mind and with his arm from the pocket and on the edges in the pass game. Yeah. And if you look at the final four teams this year, they pretty much all got that in some form or fashion. Not all y'all. You know, right on down the line. Last thing I want to get because I know you got to get out of here. Uh, uh, what does this do to a football team now? Because you know we're still waiting to see. How many guys, forget guys who've entered the transfer portal, almost everybody except Cal McCord was what I call a fringe player just trying to find a niche, you know. What what does this do to the football team headed into, uh, you know, headed into this bowl game, though, from the standpoint of <clears throat> does it? do you think it shakes it up? Do you think it wakes everybody up? We don't even know who all is going to be playing from the standpoint of sitting sure. out because of the draft. But go ahead. Yeah. Uh, I think there's uh, – there's – for the players that will most likely uh, be a part of the future at Ohio State that are staying, not answering the transfer portal, uh, that are, you know, a two or a one B that got some reps, this is the opportunity to show up. But I, I do think it, it creates some urgency in the in the program uh, and, a, and a lot to do with what has happened and the games that they've lost and being just not good enough yeah. uh, should reign supreme. And, and I think that, Everyone's being evaluated, you know, everyone, and even Ryan day doing this is uh, kind of putting everybody on watch. I think from a leadership standpoint, and uh, I, I'm not, I don't live in Columbus. I'm not around the program as much as you guys are, 
but I'll just say, uh, and you know my take on leadership and being a captain, yeah. uh, but like <laughs> Kyle McCord, because he's the quarterback, doesn't mean he's a great leader. Doesn't mean he's the captain of the ship. Doesn't mean he has the voice, right? That yeah. has to be earned. That has to be part of who you are as a person. And so Kyle McCord never to me came across as this like vocal leader. And a lot of it had to do with the fact that he wasn't taking care of the business. I mean, he was like in limbo all season long. And it's like, who wants to follow, you know, the blow like the wind guy? You know, if the wind's blowing really, really well, we'll follow you. But when it doesn't and it's in our face, oh, I got to look somewhere else for leadership because, you, yeah. you know, you might blow away. Yeah. Um, so I think the leaders of this program, the, you know, the, the core players and, and, and you would know better than I that who they, who those are. And I think in some cases it, it may very well still be the voices of, you know, Tommy Eichenberg and Steel Chambers and Kate Stover guys who, uh, want to leave the program, although you didn't accomplish your goals better than the way you found it. Yeah. And, and, and kind of pass the baton to some of those next in line players who, whose play backs up their words and whose words back up their play. If that makes sense, both that in their work sense. ethic, yeah. both in their work ethic when no one's watching and in what they do on the football fi- field, you know, when people are, when hundreds of thousands and millions of people are watching inside the white lines. Matt, this team went 11 and one. This team didn't go six and five. I mean, six and six. It, 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 does that, uh, how do you square that when you're trying to explain to people what's going on here from the standpoint of the pressure involved, et cetera, and the expectations? Look back at look look back at the last 20 years of Ohio State football. But there've been there've been down years, but I see 11 and one is 11 and one a down year? <laughs> I guess it is, right? What are our what are our goals every year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is your goal? Is your goal to win a lot of games? I'm just saying then, but this, this is, is a monster, take, man. Right. This is it, it is a monster, and again, G- Georgia. Georgia and their alumni and their, you know, their, yeah. I mean, they, they feel like they're slighted, of course, being number one all year or number one or number two all year and not making the college football playoff. And lose the one but game sure that matters. Yeah. But lose the one game that matters. And there's an immense amount of disappointment and a dark cloud over their program right now. Why? Yeah. Because the expectations are not to play in a non CFP football game. Yeah. 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 And the, lo- and the loose to their, and the loose to their rival in the SEC. Yeah. Well, as Bill Bender and I are going to talk about after we're done here, uh, you know, the thing is the CFP is a changing and the pressure is not going to be the same next year as it was this year to 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 beat your rival. I mean, the pressure is going to be there to end the three-game losing streak, but Ohio State would have been hosting a a, a playoff game here uh, in a couple of yeah, weeks, but, you know. But, Tim, I'll, t- I'll tell you this. Uh, having gone 0-2 against Michigan and gone 2-0 against Michigan, yeah. Uh, you want to be in the driver's seat. You want to be the one that controls your own destiny. You don't want to be reliant on like, like let's not, oh, like, let's relax if we lose an early season game next year, you know, yeah. and go and, and be oh and one or one and one or I mean, next year the way the season rolls out, it's probably going to be more like a, a you know, we'll be four and one after five games and we don't have a worry in the world. Why? Because 12 teams get in yeah. and that's okay, right? Yeah. That's the mentality. No, it's perfection. It's winning personified at the highest level. If we're considered a top five program in the league, in, 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 in the league, in the nation, there should be no relax, no foot coming off the gas pedal within the program because that will run downhill if it happens long enough. Yeah. Yeah. Ladies so, and gentlemen, that's the, Matt but, Go ahead. But dude, I'm just saying these coaches, Kirby Smart, Ryan Day, Nick Saban, they're paying them eight, nine, ten million dollars to be in that situation. Yeah. If not, go to a program like Missouri, make $4 million, get good once every 10 years, and then go back to being an eight and four football team or go, you know, be Mac Brown at North Carolina, you know, yeah. be undefeated at seven and zero, and finish at, at nine and three and play in a, in a, in a, in a, you know, a January 1st bowl game. And that's okay for North Carolina. That's not the standard at Ohio state. Yeah. And what you're saying is too, though, that money that you're talking about, these guys are getting paid. They're also paying, in essence, they're freeing you up to make bold decisions, right? I mean, if this isn't working, don't sit around thinking things are going to get better if I keep doing the same damn thing. You know, the old Correct. cliche. Uh, yeah, we're seeing it's this is and this and it's not to say, and it's not to yeah, yeah. And it's not to say that it's broken. It's not to say that it's broken, but tweaks need to get yeah. made. Yeah. Yeah, you can be, you can have a great race car, but it's still not fast enough. You understand what that's what you're talking about. 
Which Sometimes you need to do. Of, finish, you yeah. make a lot of money, and a lot of people think you're very successful by finishing second and second in a lot of races. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But that's not the goal, right? Yeah, yeah. No, a lot of golf. Listen, it's like golf. Yeah, it's exactly like golf. You're either first or you're last. <laughs> yeah, Wait, Ricky, no, Ricky Bobby. Like yeah, yeah, Ricky Bobby. Hey, yes, uh, man, Wilhelm. Uh, you know, we'll be, we'll be in touch before the bowl game again, too, man. I appreciate you coming on. Uh, my adding pleasure, some uh, spice and juice to this, uh, the Tim May show. I mean, things they are changing in Ohio State and in a rapid way. You know, I don't think the final shoe is dropped in all of this either. We'll see where this goes. But uh, thanks for joining me, my man. My pleasure, brother. Hopefully we get some good news about uh, adding that, uh, that, that transfer that we all can buy into for the next nine months. Who's going to be in a competition with Devin Brown and yeah. not just get handed – handed the keys to, uh, to to what is Ohio State football and offense. Yeah, I love that quarterback from Duke who's in the uh, transfer portal, though, man. That guy. Leonard, yeah. Yeah, that guy's got a lot of, you know, we'll we'll see if Ohio State can get into that sweepstakes or not. But uh, you would think he'd follow Mike Elko to Texas A&M, you know. But, you know, stranger things have happened. But, uh, yes, Matt, sir. appreciate it, man. My pleasure, brother. Have a good day. Yeah, let's get to my conversation now with uh, Bill Bender of the Sporting News. Hey, before we get to that conversation with Bill Bender of the Sporting News, uh, just want to remind you about the Game Time app. GameTime.co is the place to go uh, for tickets, whether you need them now or you need them in the future. Just like that Cotton Bowl, that's going to be that could end up being a hot ticket. It definitely is going to be a game you're going to want to watch uh, uh, with who's going to be Ohio State's starting quarterback now that Kyle McCord has exited to the scene after one year as a starter. Uh, you'll be able to get tickets for the Cotton Bowl, I'm sure, on the Game Time app. GameTime.co. And don't don't forget, if you load download the Game Time app and you use the promo code Buckeyes, you'll get twenty dollars off your first purchase. That's a hell of a deal. And the other hell of a deal is if you find a ticket uh, in a similar area, similar aisle uh, on any other app for for less, you will Game Time uh, Game Time will refund you one hundred and ten percent of the difference. So remember, the Game Time app is the place to go for. A, for late minute tickets, uh, hey, the Columbus Crew is playing for the MLS Championship uh, on on December the 9th, right here, right now. $167, $167 get in price on the Game Time app. Uh, it's the place to go if you've put off ticket purchases or all of a sudden you get a whim and you want to go uh, see an event, whether it be a concert, sporting event, or whatever. The Game Time app is the place to go. And remember, with those uh, guarantees about uh, if you find a ticket uh, for less in the same aisle, same same general area, same uh, row, uh, game time will refund 110% of the difference. And, of course, terms apply with any kind of guarantees. So the game time app, that's the place to go. Either right now or in the future, the game time app is a place to go to find your ticket to the biggest sporting events. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, college football fans across the nation and around the world. This is Tim May with the Tim May Show. Trying to be level-headed here, uh, low-key, as I welcome in my recurring guest, co-pilot Bill Bender from the Sporting News. Bill Bender, college football expert for the Sporting News. Welcome once again to the Tim May Show. And you know what we're about to talk about. Sure. Uh, Tim, the lighting expert that got my lighting better. We'll see how it looks. Um, yeah. You know, so, uh, yeah, obviously, wild day and wild weekend that we had with college football and, and this, what the, I'll, I'll, I'll let you go first. I've been talking yeah. about it all day. I mean, this, this one was unprecedented and I, the way I've termed it, Tim, is the committee got it wrong, but the playoffs are probably going to be pretty entertaining. Yeah. Okay. Let's go with that. I'm going to push the takeoff power here. And just throw it out there, as you well know, ladies and gentlemen, the, the final top four were Michigan, Washington, uh, Texas, and Alabama. The committee obviously felt hamstrung that if we're going to reward Alabama, you definitely got to put Texas in there and probably ahead of Alabama. I didn't agree with that, but uh, I think they could have gone either way because Alabama, all it was doing was coming off, knocking off the number one team in the country, uh, Georgia, the going for a three-peat. Georgia won't get that shot. We'll talk about that in a minute, whether that's fair. Uh, for the fans who follow this uh, podcast on a regular basis, this show on a regular basis, most of them or many of them are Ohio State fans. Ohio State slid all the way to what? Seven, I think. 
uh, in the final deals because they had to do something with Georgia with backslid. They had to do something with Florida State, who Bill is going to tell you probably uh, got screwed by this uh, committee in the final analysis. I'm not going to agree with that, but we'll get to that in a moment. But uh, Ohio State was never in the discussion in the final analysis, even though its only loss was by six points at what ended up being the number one team in the final college football playoff rankings. Did Ohio State get its just desserts? Bill Bender. Ohio State's playoff hopes ended when Texas won, yeah. which is part of the fault with this system is that if Texas played Ohio State tomorrow, I'm sure a lot of people in Columbus, regardless of what happened in Ann Arbor, feel like Ohio State could win that game. I would probably pick Ohio State to beat Texas. I don't think I would pick them. Well, we, we saw I picked them to beat Michigan. Don't think I'd pick them against Alabama or Georgia. Would probably pick them against Washington. So there's your problem with this whole four-team setup, is that Ohio State did drop the seven, which was predictable. But when you're in a four-team setup, they were drawing dead on conference championship week and needed a very specific set of things to happen. Yeah. But the second Texas won, that was over. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was all over, but the smoke clearing. There was a lot of smoke involved, as you well know, Bill. Uh, I'm not going to get too melodramatic here, but uh, I do want to ask you this. Uh, I talked about this on lettermanrow.com uh, in a video right after the selection Sunday was over. And, you know, the funny thing about the Ohio State team you might have seen in the playoffs and the team you might see going against Missouri in the Cotton Bowl, which, you know, on the face of it looks like a compelling Cotton Bowl, but you could have, you know, I don't know how many – Ohio State players could opt out of playing in that game based on they're not in the college football playoff now. Do you get ready for the NFL draft and move on and protect yourself? It, the next several weeks are going to be interesting to watch in that regard, aren't they? Because some of these teams aren't going to be what they were on Selection Sunday. Yeah, and that's I, as I was telling you, I, one of my first marching orders once these things are over is you we predict all 41 bowl games. And, yeah. I, wow. and it's the hardest thing I do because coaching changes motivation things like with ohio state where they could have several players not play and still very easily win the game and they are going to run into a motivated missouri team because eli's trying to build a program you heard the connor stallions joke on the espn playoff show he's got a sense of humor yes he does rub some people the wrong way so for the ohio state fans that are into that game and right into it he's going to rub you the wrong way immediately trust me yeah, yeah. and uh they got a talented team, and Ohio State's going to have to show up to play. I don't have those two played since the Andy Katzenmoyer took the quarterback's head off game. I'm not sure they have. Uh, Corby Jones, man, decleated puts the uh, puts the D and decleated uh, that Andy Katzenmoyer hit. We were Andy Katzenmoyer uh, was you know, like co-host on a, a pregame show I was on all all pre all all season here with you know for Ohio State for on 97.1 the fan, uh, a station you frequent and. Uh, and uh, I, I brought that up to him every 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 chance I could because that's one of the great hits of all time on Faroe Field there. But uh, real quick before we move on, if most of the Ohio State guys end up playing, is this a pretty good matchup in your in your mind? I mean, uh, a Missouri team that got beat by uh, Jaden Daniels in one of the most remarkable uh, exhibitions of football by one single human that we saw all year and then got beat by Georgia, had a chance to, you know, for two years in a row, played Georgia right to the hilt and then gave it away in the fourth quarter. Uh, does it have a – is it a little bit compelling to you, that matchup? Yeah, sure. I'll find a reason to watch any of these things so I don't have to wrap <laughs> yeah, <presents>. me too. <laughs> I'll get out of wrapping presents if I ah, – I really got to watch this Boca Raton yeah. bowl, honey. Yeah. Uh, I, I, if I don't do that, I you know, no, I'm, I'm making a joke. But uh, Cody Schrader can run the ball. They got the nation's leading rusher. Yeah. They, uh, I always want to call him Connor Cook. Brady Cook. Yes, was very efficient this year and luther burden if he plays that's another weapon they have this missouri program played with a ton of confidence i'll still pick ohio state to win the game yeah. I, I think they haven't seen a defense quite like that probably even and that's even counting georgia because ohio state's defense plays with a lot of you know sound they don't give up the big plays they still didn't give up the big plays against michigan yeah. so i, I think it, it's weird and i'm sure you guys have touched on this over there that I still think the high state's defense played well in Ann Arbor. I do. And yeah. um, they haven't seen something like that. So it could be ugly 
I mean, now Ohio State, it does depend on, okay, are those edge rushers playing? Is Marvin playing? Uh, the Mecca. I mean, how many are you guys looking at? It, well, we're looking like Denzel Burke. Is Denzel Burke playing? Big time cornerback, you know. Uh, is Josh Proctor playing? Josh Proctor will probably play, but, you know, he's a six year senior uh, that could opt out. You know, it's uh, just, it just, it, just the whole the whole thing leaves so many people in limbo. You know what I mean? It's a, it's a strange time. I think you agree with me on that, don't you, Bill? Because the college football playoff has been has become all consuming. It's going to be even more so next year, and it just makes these bowls that used to be just wow, man. If you can get to the if you can get to the Cotton Bowl, you've done something, you know. And uh, that I'm talking about even back in the day when it was the it was the Big Four, and it was one of the Big Four back when I was growing up in the uh, 60s and 70s. So uh, yeah, it just like I said, I'll 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 be able to tell you more about Ohio, how Ohio State's going to go in this game, how the matchup's going to look when I know who's playing for Ohio State, and that's a fair way of looking at it, right? Yeah, I think so, and I think you know part of the problem, and we we looked at this with the playoff decision that was made, and if we were back when you were covering football during the pool era, uh, the AP pool, when they, we had to pick it that way, yeah, you would have Washington and Michigan playing in the Rose Bowl. And Florida State with a chance to split a national championship. And they would yes. probably be playing Texas in the Orange Bowl by the old way. Yeah. We did it the BCS way. Washington and Michigan would be playing. And Florida State would be basically Boise State. Yeah, I think the four-team setup has been mostly good. This was just the perfect scenario where they had to make a choice where you're leaving somebody unhappy. You know, you, you were either leaving out the – they weren't going to leave out Alabama. I knew that when Alabama won. You knew, you knew that, Tim. Yeah. They weren't going to leave them out. No. And I was wondering if they would do it at Texas's expense. But when Urban Meyer, who's a frequenter on here, um, you know, I, I, I set the table for Urban on this one, I suppose. Um, when he said on the Big Ten Championship post game, they cannot take Alabama with Texas without Texas. Without Texas. That's when it hit me that you know what, they're probably going to leave Florida State out because Urban was right in that instance. You couldn't have done one without the other, or you couldn't have put Alabama in and not had Texas in. Yeah, yeah. i tell you what, he, he and I, you know, it's Urban's take I do with him every week. Uh, we're going to, you know, I don't care if people see this as me buttering him up or uh, putting him in the toaster or whatever you want to call it. Uh, you know, he Texas was his number one team going into the year just based on talent, what they had coming back, et cetera. And he talked about that. And then, of course, they get beat by Oklahoma. Everybody forgot about him. He was the one who was saying on that Urban's take and elsewhere, even on his uh, on the uh, dais there with with the other guys on that Fox Big Noon kickoff. Hey, don't – this was like eight, seven, eight weeks ago. Don't sleep on Alabama. When everybody was putting down Alabama after the loss to Texas and that uh, near fiasco at South Florida, and he was right. And right now you look at it. Texas, uh, Alabama opened as a 1.5 point underdog to Michigan. And by the middle of the afternoon on Sunday, after the pairings had been announced, Alabama had moved into the favorite troll because everybody started scratching their head like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Remember Jalen Milrow? <laughs> Remember Alabama coming back and playing the number one team in the country and basically taking control of that game? I'm talking about Georgia. Uh I think Alabama is really the snake in the grass in this whole deal. What is your take on that, Bill? Oh, they'll win the game. Like, knee-jerk reaction, and I'll have to break it down more, but I, I'll pick Alabama yeah. to win. Why wouldn't you? I mean, Michigan's offensive line has some serious issues. Alabama has more talent. Alabama has a quarterback that's figured things out. Alabama – I mean, I'm not saying Michigan can't win, but Michigan did not run the ball well against Iowa. And Iowa's good on defense, but Alabama has better players on that side of the ball. Yeah. And you know, who, you know who's representing Florida State in this as a team that was a lot like Florida State, but not, you know, things didn't get that bad for them because uh, the team didn't lose its starting quarterback, which was the difference maker, is Washington. Washington had some close calls, you know, after after that first win over Oregon. It just seemed like Washington got in the easy chair and just kind of, you know, won some games almost on reputation to a certain extent. But then when they needed to beat Oregon again, they did it. Uh, fair and square, so to speak. Oregon didn't make any stupid decisions with its fourth down and go for it kind of situation, Dan Lanning, and Washington beat them again. And uh, here's Washington in the top two, uh, you know, playing uh, playing Texas. Uh, what's, what's your thoughts on that matchup? 
Tough one to pick because Washington absolutely can win that game. They beat yeah. Texas in the Alamo Bowl last year. Yeah. They're that team that has won 20 straight games. They have three really good receivers. Their, their receiving core, yeah, I'll say it. Their, their receiving core is as good as Ohio State's. I agree. I mean, because they've got Rome, they've got McMillan, they, they've got Polk. They, they create, they've got creative play calling. Um, they're, they're pretty good on that side of the ball. This is probably a toss up, but Texas is playing outstanding football right now. And I think it's set up to be a rematch between Texas and Alabama, that 10 point game they played down in Tuscaloosa in September where Quinn Ewers played awesome. Uh, they've got good receivers. So, and it's down at the Sugar Bowl, and that's a little bit of an advantage for Texas, I think. And that's why Michigan, people that were asking, why would Michigan, as the one seed, why wouldn't they be in the primetime game? Well, they chose the Rose Bowl. Yeah, they, yeah. They want to go out there, and I believe that's that's their first Rose Bowl in a long time. They, I think the last one was um, – I can't even USC. remember. Yeah. USC when – Maybe oh six, yeah. It, it's been a while. It was the the year of uh, one and two. Yeah, pretty maybe, sure. Maybe we should have looked that up to make sure, you know. But I didn't. But you're right. I mean, and uh, and number three, you don't want you don't want to be playing Alabama in New Orleans, where Mm-mm. the whole state of Alabama, if it made up its mind, could all drive there in uh, in a couple of three four hours. So that made all kinds of total sense from a tr- traditional standpoint, et cetera. Of course, I think. The last time Alabama played in the Rose Bowl stadium with something on the line, uh, was that the uh, was that the was that the Alabama Texas national championship game? I'm trying well, to remember. Huh? They did. So they've played in a quote unquote Rose Bowl when they went to. I mean, uh, in the AT&T. stadium, yeah, yeah, exactly. in the actual stadium. I think you got to go back to the Texas national championship game. Yeah, when exactly. they played the uh, the Longhorns and Colt McCoy got hurt, but. You know, as far as a uniform game, that'll be fun. Yeah. As far as the history of the Rose Bowl, that will be fun. And, and as far as high television ratings, that will probably be in the neighborhood of that first semifinal between the Buckeyes and Alabama. Because as I, I – well, I know the answer in Columbus, right? But um, I think America's rooting for Alabama. Isn't that crazy? You're, uh, that's, that's like what? Darth Vader. Darth Vader has – is still Darth Vader, but he's wearing another costume now. He's wearing the uh, – the uh, costume of a, uh, of a, of a popular figure, you know, in folklore and uh, going in there because man, I just, uh, uh, well, the way I put it, Tim was for those I'm, I'm that stammering. Are, Cause you know what I'm thinking about, about Michigan right now. Go ahead. Well, no, I'm just saying for those that want Michigan to, to get theirs, so to speak, to get that comeuppance, to get the, to meet their maker and, and pay the bill. I mean, there's no better form of justice than Alabama. Yeah. I mean, because that is, they are the most merciless program in college football since, I mean. Yeah, since Georgia. Since, <laughs> no, I'm just since, joking. Since Georgia the last two years, right? And, and 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 they are the Death Star. I always, com- I've compared them to the Death Star since you yeah. use the Star Wars analogies. They just build a new one. This no. one's a little bit different with Jalen Milrow, but it's pretty darn efficient. It's a, it's got a laser beam. Uh, the Death Star has a laser beam named Jalen Milrow, and you're exactly right. And it's funny that calling someone a Death Star is actually a compliment on this show. But it is, <laughs> it's where we are, ladies and gentlemen, college football in the strangest, one of the strangest years ever. The last year of the college football playoff 14 format is going to 12 next year. Uh, you know what? I think I'm going to miss. Because I don't care who 11, 12, and 13 are and 14 are. But I think I'm going to miss the drama, Bill, of who number four is. Because it's it's hard to make up what, what, we, what we just witnessed. A team win a Power 5 conference, go undefeated, lose its quarterback along the way, still figure out a way to win games, go undefeated, win its conference championship game over Louisville, and not make the Final Four – it's unprecedented, actually, in a college football era, college football playoff era, but not anymore. And we're oh, talking about yeah. Florida State, ladies and gentlemen. Right. There will never be a scenario what happened will happen again because if nope. you win your conference and go unbeaten, from now on you'll be in. The, the, the cost was next year when I'm doing this podcast with you, we're going to be uh, debating, well, did they get Ole Miss and 
Georgia Tech right. Well, Georgia yeah. Tech's a bad example, yeah. but you know Could what be. I mean. Did they get that 13th team in there that should have been in there? And that's absurd. Uh, hey, wait a minute. Shouldn't Liberty and SMU be in there? Or Liberty and uh, right. Tulane, you know? <laughs> How about the Flames? Shout out the Flames getting to Yeah, the exactly. Absolutely. Six. Their quarterback's nice. Um, and SMU, but, you know, but, yeah. I Go don't ahead. want to have that argument, but the trade-off for me as a proud o- Ohio University alum is there is that sliver of, man, we might get into the 12th, si- 12th seed. And I will absolutely be down there wherever they play. Uh against a old miss or a Penn state or, you know, that kind of thing. That's the, the trade-off, but I will miss this because four or four between four and eight would have been the right numbers. Yes. Eight would have been the right number. Agreed. Uh, eight would have been six or eight to me. Yeah. Cause six you're getting into, you can give the team a buy. No, I don't um, believe in that. So I, see, I don't want to discuss Well, we can discuss that if you want. You don't, don't want to discuss it, but I got eight would be perfect. Yeah. Eight, yeah. three, three wins. And what do we got this year with? There, you'd have there, Ohio there state was, in there. You'd have uh, Florida state in there. Georgia. You'd have Georgia in there. Georgia, which you can argue, deserve the right to try for a three peat, you know, based on all the other criteria, but they didn't win a conference championship. And who's the, uh, who am I leaving out? Ole Miss? Who am I leaving out? Somebody like, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. and you have one through it. And, and the best part about that was you could have a home game at Ohio stadium. That isn't a five through 12 game. Like there, the reward for a first through fourth seed should be home game, yeah. left home game. That's why we did this. So we could see Ole Miss come up and shiver at Ohio stadium or Kinnick stadium or Michigan stadium. That's part of the allure for the big 10 fan is you're bringing these Southern teams up there. Yeah. I think that's a, a stupid allure. And I, if I'm Ohio state, I don't want to play when it's uh 25 degrees and possibly snowing that takes away a lot of what I'm all about, which is, uh, uh, you know, uh, splash and dash, you know, with a big high powered offense running the running the ball and throwing the ball. And, you know, I, that's why I agreed with Gene Smith when he talked about play, possibly playing that game, in Indianapolis, if in fact it ever came to came to pass, now of course he's going to be moving. He's going to be moving out the pasture, you know, the end of June as the outgoing Ohio State athletic director. We'll see how they handle that. But uh, I want to see things on an even Stephen kind of basis in the because I don't think bad weather hel- helps either team. And uh, if it does, it's usually the team that probably shouldn't be there in the first place. But I want to get into this. Uh, what was your final four? You know, before it all came out, what was your final four? For this year, wrong. I've never got it wrong. I was mad because it's the first time I got a team quote unquote wrong. Um, I had Michigan, Washington, one, two. I had Alabama, three. I thought they may jump them all the way up. And then I had Florida State, four, because I just don't believe in what they did. And I, I think the worst part of all this, Tim, to me, isn't that Florida State got left out because it's, I feel the worst for Jordan Travis. Because Jordan yep. Travis became the name that we're associating this argument with. And yes. do you think he feels good about having his ankle snapped? And do you think he feels good that people – do you think Tate Rodemaker feels good that, hey, you're – you're you still won. Your third-string quarterback still won. Your defense played its butts off. But you're not good enough, and you did everything you could to do it. And I think that's the worst part about this. And I was running through my head, what if J.J. McCarthy did that last night against Iowa? Yeah. They wouldn't yeah. do that to them. No. What if Jalen Milrow would have sprained his ankle on a final play against Georgia? They're not leaving them out. I, I think it's so patently unfair what they did to Florida State. And if it meant, but I knew the committee, I just knew because I'm cynical that they weren't going to leave Alabama out. They just yeah. weren't going to leave the SEC champion out. They, not after all that stuff Greg Sankey said on game day about Sesame Street and not after, honestly, not after watching Georgia and Alabama, where you were like, yeah, these are probably the two best teams in the country. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. Uh, this idea that this idea that Texas was joined at the hip to Alabama, uh, I, I did not agree with, uh, because that Texas game happened the second game of the year. Uh, Alabama had not figured out its quarterback situation, or had, but wasn't, wasn't giving him, uh, in my opinion, the suitable – offense to deal with there they figured that out you know as I brought up to you you know they went to that in my opinion they can admit it or not they went to the Texas the offense of 2005 with uh, Vince Young and did exactly what that guy could do best which was throw the ball don't make the passing game too too uh, complex 
uh, for a first year starter. And then man, if it ain't there, take off running Jalen. And that's exactly what they did. Uh, run Jalen run. I think that's their battle cry now. Instead of roll tide roll. You should pat yourself on the back, Tim. I am patting the way myself that on the you, back. The way you compared that to Vince Young is exactly what they've done. Yeah. And, and the way he, they run and he's made a couple deep passes. Their defense is playing a lot better. You should like take a bow or something. That was a great. Think about think about that combo and what it does to a defense. Though this guy is really accurate on deep balls, and then he runs like a four four forty. You understand what I'm saying? So how do you as a defense, if your de- defensive line lets him out of contain or whatever? I mean, it just is a no brainer. Vince Young was sort of run o- run over people and make people dodge and miss. You know, Jalen Milrow is a different kind of player, but. It just made all kinds of totals. You don't make things don't have to be complex if you've got a great player. And that's what the Alabama finally seized on. So Alabama, you know, who knows? Michigan may thump them. I don't see that happening at all. But uh, uh, what I wanted to get to, though, with you is what you just touched on about uh, Travis Jordan. Or what, what did I say that wrong? Jordan Travis. Yeah, Jordan Travis. I mean, like Earl Bruce. Give me a name. Give me one name, man. Um, what, what Next year. First round playoffs, you get in. You've got a hell of a quarterback. He gets you to the promised land. You win that first round over whomever, you know, game because of mainly your quarterback. But in the meantime, he gets hurt. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? You're right. still in the playoff. You still have a way. You still have a chance to be Florida State and figure out a way to win that next round and stay in the playoff. That's why I didn't like the argument. Uh, that they used, like you just brought up, uh, uh, about losing Florida State losing its quarterback, and suddenly, you know, you don't belong. And uh, there's something to be said, like you said, for running the table. I don't care what league you're in, running the table in this modern age where teams are so close to each other should have been rewarded, I do believe. Although that wasn't my final Final Four. My final Final Four was, because I knew what the committee would do, my final Final Four was uh, was Michigan, Washington, Alabama, and Texas. Because Alabama beat the number one team in the country on the last day of the season, Texas beat Alabama on the second weekend of the season. I'm not Big a, difference. Big difference. I'm not the- opposed to that, Tim. I thought they could have bumped Alabama ahead of Texas, and I wouldn't have cared because of everything Man. you just said. And then you have Alabama, Washington in the Sugar Bowl, Michigan, Texas in the Rose Bowl, and they they played a Rose Bowl out there a while back too. That was yeah. a pretty good one. Yeah, and then you could tease. Michigan or Texas against Alabama. Now, Washington can get in the way. I do. I will say this. This is the first time in a minute where I felt like you can make a valid case that all four teams could win it. Yeah. And in the past, I haven't been able to do that. Like, I I could, like, last year I could have been like, who who was it even last year? No, last year it was – no, TCU. I didn't think they could win it. I thought I didn't think they could win the first one. So Yeah, and then they win the first round, and you kind of go, wow. And, boy, did they get killed. In the second round. <laughs> yeah, second round was not good. Hey, uh, I, was wanted, I wanted to ask you that. Uh TCU was was sort of a was sort of a Florida State in a way, you know, when you think about it. Because the you know, and there had to be people uh who were, if they're honest, on that committee were just going, Come on, Jeff Brom, you know, can't you get a touchdown and a half? You know what I mean? And to get to remove the Florida State uh the Florida State conundrum. Because uh, when you looked at TCU, TCU got there just by figuring out a way to win games. You remember all that, all the drama that was involved yep. with that team, and they get in there and they win the first round. You go, see, see, they belong, and then boy, they did not belong. From the second half against Michigan on, they really got thumped. You know, Michigan kind of settled down and kind of thumped them, but not they didn't make the plays they needed to to finally catch them and win that game. But. Uh, uh, but if this is just going to belong to the elite, to the better teams, the four better teams, how can you really tell who the four better teams are in college football? Because Oregon can play with Michigan. Oregon can play with Florida State, with Texas. you got to believe that, right? Yeah, and Oregon would have been the other team in our eight-team playoff. We shortchanged them. Yeah, I put them forgot, in the world forgot all about Oregon. Just they like were the pretty game. good, too. They just had oh, a bad yeah. night. Um, yeah. Yeah, and that's that's the beauty of what we're going to see with the 12-team playoff. I have mixed feelings about what's next. I do. I, I think on one hand, 
yeah, it's going to be fun to have these games and have an NFL playoff type model and more teams and more football is never a bad thing. But we've talked about it. I mean, it's going to change the nature of Michigan, Ohio State. It's going to change the nature of how we look at the Big Ten. The Big Ten is going to feel like the AFC. Yeah. With yeah. 18 teams in it and a Pacific wing and night, tr- night games at Washington, night games at UCLA. And you're going to be like, what? That's a conference game? And, and that's happening. And that's part of the trade-off of what we've sold into. I'll tell you another thing, Tim. Normally this week is about – bulls and and breaking these matchups down and all those things but now it's become the transfer portal we're all you know what you're going to be looking at all week is who's transferring which quarterback's going where who's getting cam ward um unless he already transferred is arch manning going to transfer those kind of things it it that is what's overtaken december in uh college football we'll talk about more that way more than the myrtle beach bowl it's just although they're using the myrtle beach bowl so we can talk about that it's just like the NFL, man. The NFL has a way to make you talk about them all, about them all year, you know. And uh, from the uh, getting ready for the uh, combine to uh, free agency, water right on down the line. I mean, it's like it's it's very much like that. I don't like that model. And here's what I was getting to a while ago too, and I kind of got off track as I usually do before we wrap this up. Is that uh, as I brought this up, I brought this up several times this year, especially since the 12 team thing got announced even last year. Uh, 12 team playoff is um, uh, you're I think you're going to see conference championship games go to the wayside I know they make a lot of money for for conferences now but how much money do you need in the expanded college football playoff era but I mean why if you're the big 10 and you have Ohio State and and Michigan sitting there why would you put them in any more jeopardy by playing again the next week if in fact they're one and two next year in the uh in the Big Ten again like they were this year because they would play basically the next week. We're waiting to see finally how that format comes down. But uh, why would you put them in jeopardy of screwing up one of the others standing in the final 12? You follow what I'm saying? I think and they should. Why, why would anybody do that now? Go ahead. I, I know they're money makers. I know what they mean for TV, but get rid of them. Yeah. You know, if you're going to make the model like the NFL, they don't do a NFC North championship game. Before yeah. the playoffs. Well, here's the other thing. Look, look, Z- what Xavier Worthy is that the kid's name for Texas? Mm-hmm. At the end of the game, uh, he was on crutches and uh, I think a boot. You understand what I'm saying? That was a big time game where guys were put in jeopardy. And uh, you know, Texas, who knows how well how serious his injury is. My point was, when you get into a deal where you've got to win a minimum of three games to win a national championship, much let much less four. These conference, these uh, college football rosters are not going to look the same, anywhere close to the same, in the championship game as they were when you started that road two or three games ago. And uh, so, why would you ha- have on top of that a conference championship game, which will be played at the same intensity? Uh, they're really, they're really counting on college football players staying healthy, man. It's going to be, you know, you're going to see football teams who aren't the same. Uh, like I was talking about a while ago, who may have started off number one or number three in the uh, in the pecking order, but by the end of the by the end of the road, if they get to the end of the road, they're going to be limping around. You're going to have some star players hurt right on down the line because this is not the NFL. You do not have a uh, waiver wire, et cetera. Right, and and that's when I remember having that conversation with some Ohio State players a few years ago when they had a media availability before one of their bowl games, and I think I actually think you may have asked the question about. You know, you guys are getting into this territory where you're playing 15, 16 games. Yeah. When when you're dealing with players at places like Ohio State, Alabama, Michigan, Georgia, their goal, yeah, they want to win national championship and do all those things, but they want to get to the NFL. Oh, yeah. And you're risk putting that at risk the more games you're adding. So, and again, part of me is like, and then we do this in Ohio high school football now where they got to win like 16 games to win a state championship yeah. like St. Yeah. Ed's did this weekend. Yeah, you're pushing it a little bit. I, if they add too much more, it's not going to work. Yeah, I agree. And the last thing uh, before we get out of here, as much as uh, you know, we've castigated Jim Harbaugh and <laughs> everything else you can do that hasn't aided on it this year. You know, he repeated once again something that if you were at the uh, final press conference before before uh, Georgia played uh, Ohio State last year, I asked those two coaches, shouldn't the players in an expanded playoff share in the revenue? You know, in some form or fashion. And uh, we'll see if they get to that point. But it's as much as you like or dislike uh, Jim Harbaugh, and I imagine it's more of the latter now, 
uh, he does bring up a great point that people are still refusing to truly address. And not that that will necessarily keep players involved, but when you're putting yourself in jeopardy like that on a repeated basis for good old you, you deserve more than a pat on the back and a trip through the, uh, a trip through the gift, uh, the gift line. You know what I'm talking about. I mean, about the payoff for uh, for being in bowl games and our and our the college football playoff. Uh, I think you you may not agree with me on that, but I just think the revenue sharing has got to, it must commence. What do you think? Jim, Jim Harbaugh is one of the best advocates for the student athlete in the game. Now we could we don't have to talk about everything else that happened with him this season. No, no, we're talking or, about one or thing. His yeah. Weird personality. Or, or those kind of things. But as far as he's in favor of the transfer portal, he's in favor of, you know, taking care of the athletes because, and that's one of the things that he is so all over the board. Like you can really not like one thing about him. And then yeah. you're like, that won't make sense. And, yeah. you know, to his credit, he's got them in position to take their swing at Alabama. It'll be a momentous game for them. But yeah, I think you want what's best for these players and you see what Marvin Harrison and, and Cade Stover and these guys mean to the university and mean to the entire state, quite yeah. frankly, that they should be treated accordingly. I, I totally agree with that. I agree. Yeah. Okay. I'm glad to hear. I agree. Coming out of your mouth. Yeah. Bill, Bender. Bill Bender of the sporting news, man. Yeah. I love it when you're on here, you're not really the co-pilot. You're the, you're the co hyphen. No, you're the co pilot. You know what I mean? <laughs> the co-star anyway, Bill Bender. Thanks for joining me again on the Tim May show, man. Let's do it again before the bowls. All right. Real Anytime, quick, Tim. We'll real quick, you got to make all these uh, big, big, uh, big, big picks for the sporting news. What's game? What, what game have you got your eye on right now? It doesn't necessarily have to be one of the Final Four, including the Final Four. What, what game have you got on right now? It could be a could be a major eye opener. Georgia, Florida State. I mean, we're going to pay more attention to that one than we ever have. And if somehow Florida State wins, I mean, there's a lot riding on that, and they'll be fun. I mean, there's 41. I always tell people, Bulls mean something to something different to everybody. It means yes. James, James Madison and Jacksonville state, they're going to be fired up to be at their bowl game. So Liberty is going to be super fired up. Yeah. So it means something a little bit different to everybody. Never say they're meaningless and uh, how they're part of the holiday season. Like I said, I get, she's probably in that other room. I'm, I, I try to get out of wrapping presents. I try to watch as many of them as I can. Yeah. By the way, before you go, they expanded the playoffs. I do believe to make like the cotton bowl and the sugar bowl and the orange bowl and the peach bowl. And of course the rose, uh, et cetera, the, the, the big, the, the big six bowl games still matter because those are the, those are the games that were losing some interest, but you, I'm talking about from the people who were in them, but, but for the James Madison's of the world, the liberties of the world, uh, Tulane, et cetera, they're fired up about where they're going. Right. Absolutely. And, and again, you know, that school that gets their first bull victory, you know, yes. that, that, that happens. The, the school that had the coach leave and, and their kids are still motivated. It's a lot of seniors. I, I roomed with, I had two roommates at Ohio university that played football and, and you, any senior that doesn't go to the NFL will tell you how much that last football game means. So yeah, I'll watch them. I'll watch Ohio state, Missouri. I'll watch every play. It'll be a lot of fun. I got I gotta one more impression from you. Kurt Signetti. Takes to the basketball court. Didn't exactly <laughs> do a Jim Trussell. He did a Kurt Signetti. And by the way, uh, you know, uh, Purdue sucks. And, and Ohio State sucks. And Michigan sucks. I'm paraphrasing, but he used the word sucks with all three. What's your take on that, man? Well, Purdue's one thing, but he went into the prison yard and yes. picked, the, picked the fight with the two biggest inmates. I mean, they haven't beat Indiana since – Indiana has beat Ohio State since like 87? You'd probably know that. Yeah, 88. One. They beat him two 88, years ago. Yeah. I feel like Anthony Thompson was the tailback when they last beat Michigan yeah. in, in uh I got great stories Ohio about State. those games, but go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, he's picking a fight with the the two mammoths. So that'll add some spice to those games. It's one thing when Tom Allen was doing it and ESPN will clip to the locker room. But and like you said, the first thing I thought of is not exactly how Jim Trestle approached no, that. He didn't phrase it that way. <laughs> Yeah, he he yeah. was he was like very eloquent, like Abraham Lincoln, and this one was the bar fighter coming right out. But I don't think Ohio State and Michigan they'll use it as bulletin board material. We all do, but yeah, maybe beat Purdue first. Yeah, well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Bill Bender, one of my favorite people of all time. I owe him about 25, 30 breakfasts. Uh, maybe I can get it all in one big buffet one of these days. We'll see. Maybe we hit Vegas together. But anyway, Bill. Yeah. Thank you once again. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again for tuning in. Until next week, we'll see you then.